So what we've recently found, we had a uh, little bit of problem on the uh, non-drive side crank. We're finding it was coming a little bit loose. Um, so we're basically trying to decipher what the problem is. Um, one thing we originally thought it could have been is the length of the bolt. It had a 12 millimeter thread in it, which is very short. So we tested the combined length of the, um, the crank as well as the inside of the motor, and it's about 22 millimeters. So we found a bolt that was a lot longer, We've got a bolt that's 20 millimeters, and that gives it increased friction. It's also got teeth on the, the flat edge of the bolt head. So when that goes in, that locks it. But we're not sure if that's the complete problem. So what we did, we sent the crank, sent that to, um, so we sent the shaft to the crank manufacturer, and they tested the, they tested the shaft fully, and found out there's a slight discrepancy in the angle on the end of the shaft, bear with me. Um, so the drive side of the shaft had a, a degree um, of, it was a four degree angle from the um, large tapered edge of the, of the shaft to the small tapered edge. Uh, on the non-drive side, it was 3.2 degrees. So what that does, it gives you a little bit of play in the actual crank itself. So over time, that rock slowly, it burrs the actual crank and loosens it. So now what we've done here, with a 3D testing facility to make sure those angles are the same. If they're not, we're gonna have to work on a solution to get these shafts remanufactured so the degree is the same. Do you get that? <laughs> Following on from the problem we had with the shaft, basically our motor manufacturers, they've released over 10,000 of these motors, they haven't had a single problem. So Rob and me inspected one, you know, a load of the shafts, um, and we found one of the shafts had a little bit of play in the game, as Rob explained earlier. Um, so basically what we've done, we've driven out to the shaft manufacturer, uh, met Mr. Wan here, and um, yeah, we're just trying to, trying to work out what the problem is. So there's quite a few, a few solutions we've come up with. Firstly, we um, found the measurement of the gauge, and the gauge is accurate with win uh, 20 microns, which is 0.02 millimeters. So, we found out the measurement here, uh, we found out the minimum max that's acceptable for tolerance, and then we uh, laser measured all of the gauges, and we found one of the actual gauges was with um, was 10 microns out, so 0.01 of a millimeter. So, with, you know, we don't want to release anything that's absolutely perfect, obviously. So we're making new gauges that are completely within these tolerances. That's the first thing we've, we've uh, worked out. The second thing, we've found a machine that produces our shaft. We're going to get that re completely recalibrated. It's going to be recalibrated every six months or so. We're going to make sure it's recalibrated uh, before the production run of our shaft. That's the second thing. Um, the third thing we're doing, they change the blades on these cutting machines about every 200 shafts because they wear down. We're going to get them to change them out every 150 shafts. Um, so that's three solutions we've come up with to make sure that the shafts are completely within spec, completely within tolerance. Um, yeah, so the shafts are coming to you, they're going to be absolutely perfect. Cheers, guys.